Nine. All right, so let's talk about this new unit. Can you guys quiet down, please? Um, we're talking about introduction to matrices. So a matrix is something you probably haven't done mathematically. Maybe you've heard that term used, like there's a movie called Matrix, or like if you're dealing with like a, an arrangement or an array of something, that's usually called a matrix. Mathematically, it's just simply a rectangular arrangement of numbers. That's all a matrix ever is. So like this is called a matrix because you have a bunch of numbers inside that are shaped like a rectangle, right? If you think about it, how many rows of numbers do I have? Yeah. And how many columns do I have? Yeah. Great. Or if I were to go do this, um, a little depressing for me because the Niners are out of it. But if I went to ESPN and clicked on standings, that's a matrix, right? If you think about it, you know, each row represents an NFL team. Every column represents some statistic, like how many games they won, the loss, how many games they tied, win percentage, how they did it at home, away, and so forth, right? Or you could look at the NBA, which is a little more exciting because, you know, at least we have a shot at it if you're a Warriors fan. <laughs> But same thing, right? Like you see, you know, every row. So that's a matrix. It's just an arrangement of numbers. And it helps keep it helps keep your, your numbers organized. Um, another thing that you could do too is like if you go to Amazon, right? If I go to my Amazon, um, you'll see that I probably um, order like diapers, uh, baby formula, um, other baby stuff. Why? Because I have a newborn baby, right? And when I go to um, Amazon, usually they recommend stuff based upon my recent visits. How do they know? I mean, they use very sophisticated technology. But how do they know like what I'm interested in? Because they organize all my information in a matrix. And in fact, actually, they organize all the customer's information. Amazon's got the biggest database in the world. Like it's not even, no one even comes close to the amount of data. They have ridiculous amounts of data. I mean, get, getting like an Amazon certification and, and their, the way they do their data is like a whole other like degree, right? It's just kind of crazy what they do with the data, right? So it's important to learn matrices because if you do eventually study computer science or data science, you do any coding, you're going to have to be familiar with matrices. So we want to understand at least the basics of it. And then you can go on the deep end with it when you're in college or elsewhere. Every number is called an element. Okay. So 2, 9, negative 11, negative 7, 1, 23. Those are called elements of the matrix. They're the individual values. The dimensions. The dimensions are always stated by rows and columns. So rows and columns. So how many rows does this have again? Nope. Two rows. Rows are horizontal, columns are vertical. How many columns does it have? Three. In fact, actually, we call it a two by three matrix. We call it a two by three matrix. You always state the rows first and the columns second. That's just the standard. You could also write it as two X three. If you write 2x3, it's like 2 by 3. Some people just write it like that. That's how I like to write it. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that um, you're told that two matrices are equal if and only if they have the same dimensions and their corresponding elements are equal. Okay? So let's look at example one. They say use the definition of equal matrices to solve for x and y. Well, here's the problem. With number one, what's how many rows do we have on the left matrix? One rows. Okay, let me, if this helps, here we go. <laughs> row one, row two. No worries, no worries. It's, it's all good. So it's got two rows, and how many columns does it, does it have? So it's a two by one matrix. How about the second one? Two rows, one column, two columns. Okay, good. Are these dimensions the same for both these matrices? Yeah. No. So, these are not equal matrices so you can't solve for x and y. I'm going to skip around and kind of show you one that we can do. Um, but yeah, these are not equal matrices, so you can't solve for X and Y. Let me show you one that we can solve. Uh, let me jump down to near the end of this assignment. 
probably the last page, I believe. Yeah, last page. Let's look at number 13. So again, um, this one you can't solve. Let's look at number 13. So number 12, you can't solve. Yeah. All right. But let's take a look at 13. Um, I'm going to use a little highlighter here. It's going to get very colorful. Notice how 3x minus 3 and 0 are in the same position, right? Also notice negative 3 and negative 3 are in the same position. Also notice negative 10 and negative 10 are in the same position. Also notice y minus 1 and 5 minus 1. 5y minus 5 are also in the same position. So 3x minus 3 equals 0. And y minus 1 equals 5y minus 5. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah it's, hopefully it's just intuitive. Actually, a lot of this is intuitive, I would say. Um, these are in the same position, so they must equal each other. Because negative 3 and negative 3 are in the same position. Negative 10, negative, negative 10, negative 10. Are the same position. Y minus one, five y minus seven are in the same position as well. So what would x equal here if I solved it? One. One. Therefore, you're going to make those the same. And if I solve this one, I get four y equals four. Y also equals one. And that's that. So you're trying to find corresponding elements and setting them equal to each other when you have equal matrices. And in order for the matrix to be equal, their dimensions must line up. They must be the same in order for them to be. So 12, I couldn't do because that's just weird. But 13, I can. Um, OK. So that's um, one part of matrices. The rest of the stuff that we'll do today will be arithmetic. Seriously, like adding and multiplying, subtracting. If you can add, subtract, multiply, you'll be fine. Yes, it does get harder. But for today, it'll be pretty easy. <laughs> um, so here's a matrix, right? And how many rows does this one have? And call it three columns, right? And you see there's a K on the outside. If you use your intuition, what would I do about that K? That's it. That's all you do, you distribute it. It's that simple. Um, so everything would be multiplied by K. Yeah, exactly. It's that simple. Uh, what about if you're adding two matrices? If you're adding two matrices and the dimensions are the same, because that's two by two, and that's another two by two, then guess what? Add the numbers. That's all you do. <laughs> so you see how like A and F are in the same position? Add them up. B and J in the same position? Add them up. C and H in the same position? Add them up. B and J in the same position? Add them up. That's all you do. If you have a subtraction sign instead of an addition sign in the middle of the two matrices, subtract the numbers. That's all. Again, it's just basic arithmetic that we're doing here. Um, just to get you guys introduced. Yes, we're going to do more advanced stuff with this, but we got to do the foundational stuff first. Um, so, yeah, it's just, just really that simple. So let's uh, apply some of these skills. Yeah, Eric, go ahead. Um, they have to have the same dimensions. Yeah, because you have to mean, you know, they line up correctly, right? So you got to make sure, like, you know, this lines up with this, this lines up with this. Yeah. And so forth. And just use your intuition and, yeah, add it, right? So, again, not 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 hard stuff. Um, and by the way, um, for those who are juniors who might be taking the ACT later this spring, they sometimes, sometimes ask these questions on the ACT. This, this has shown up. Um, so could help with that stuff. Um, all right, let's take a look at these examples here, just using what we just talked about. So let's look at example four. It's pretty clear you're distributing a four, right? So guess what? I am going to distribute a four. <laughs> what do you get? Negative eight? Zero, 20. Yep. 44, 16, 12, 24, four. Eight, negative eight. You guys agree with Eric? I think so. Yeah, good job, Eric. There we go. It's that simple. Just multiply. Example three is a little more involved. There's a distribution, but also a subtraction, right? 
And I would probably do the distribution first and it's tracked afterwards. Um, so what I'll do, for example, three is I'll, I'll copy the left matrix as is. So six, eight, 10, negative two, five thirds, and seven. And then I'm gonna leave a minus in the middle here and distribute the one third. Now, if you wanna distribute negative one third, go ahead and then change that minus to a plus. It's up to you, just be careful. But I'll distribute one third for now, straight up. Negative one, zero, four, three, five thirds, and negative nine. Okay. Now subtract them. That's it. I know you guys can subtract. So yeah, six minus negative one, that's seven, right? Eight minus zero is 10 minus four, negative two minus three, five thirds minus five thirds, and seven minus negative nine. Yeah, be careful there. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. And by the way, this is a three by three matrix, and that's a two by three. Always state the rows first, column second. Okay. Rows first, column second. Questions so far? We're okay. Okay, go and try example four on your own. Tell me what you get. Um, I would probably suggest you combine these two first and the two with one fifth into the third matrix. Okay. All right. What do you got? Two twelve. No, yikes. I can't subtract. Obviously, it should be eight and four, right? See, careless mistakes could happen. Happens to all of us. Um, negative eleven and negative twelve. Three and negative thirteen. I already may have done this wrong with the other class. That's right. Negative one and negative six. Good. Just kidding. All right. Zero to one fifth. One. Negative two. Five. Eleven. Negative six. Negative three. Zero. And nine. You're adding them up. You okay, Eric? Eric, you're good? Yeah, you're on my Oh, um, can, 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 can I wait? Yeah. All right, good. Okay. Nine, two, negative six, negative one, negative three, negative 16, negative one, and three. And again, yes, we totally can make careless mistakes. It's video, it's a lot of risk that is happening. What could happen? I know not very exciting problems. You'll get more stimulating, I promise, if I've never seen it. But yeah, that's that. Yeah. We're gonna move on to matrix multiplication. Before I do that, any questions on these three examples on this page? Makes sense. Okay. You know, have a chance to do some practice. Um, at the end of this, there's homework. The homework will be at the end of this packet. And I'll, I'll sign in school as well. Okay. Let's um, move on to matrix multiplication. Okay. Now, matrix multiplication is a little tricky. It's not going to be um, terribly intuitive at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. Not necessarily. Um, so let's 
let me show you this first. Um, let me pull up one of my old files here. And this is not, this, you, don't, you guys don't have access to this. This is just from my old algebra two files. Um, let me explain to you why matrix multiplication is important and how it actually goes down. So let's look at number 11 here. Uh, it's not hard to read, so let me zoom in a tad. So, oh, yikes. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So you have a softball team, right? They got three types of equipment. They have bats, balls, and uniforms. They have the price for each of those items, right? $21 for a bat, $4 for a ball, $30 for a uniform. You're asked to organize this information into a matrix, then use matrix multiplication to find the total cost of all the equipment. I mean, you kind of don't need to do that. I mean, you could just do it mentally. Like, like how much is the, I mean, how, how would I figure, how would I figure out the total cost? What would I do? Like, what kind of math? Like, 12 times. Good. You do 12 times 21, 21 right? 45 times 4. Yeah. Times 30. Yeah, just and divide, yeah. right? It's yeah. not that hard, right? And then you just, you know, do this, right? Add them up. It'd be great. Here's the issue, though, when you have a lot of data, like Amazon.com, <laughs> where if they're trying to figure out their revenue for a certain, like, product type or product category, they need to put it in a matrix to, to make sure that the computer can actually compute it quickly, right? So that's how these computers work. They put things in matrices to, to make the math go to, you know, happen more quickly. Um, so you'd have to organize it in a matrix to um, if you have a lot of data, right? So the way this work, and again, you don't have to write this down, but you would put uh, the equipment right here. This is, by the way, a one by three matrix, right? One row, three columns. You put the costs in here. 21, 4, and 30. That's a three by one. And there's a, there's a process called matrix multiplication where you combine these numbers and these numbers to get the final answer. Now, in order for this to happen, very important, the columns of the left matrix must equal the rows of the left matrix in order for this to happen. So let me show you, let's go back to the notes. Let me show you how the matrix multiplication works. But that's why we have it in order to combine two matrices in an efficient manner. That's why we have matrix multiplication. So let me close this down. And let's talk about this one here. So how am I gonna do this one? Okay, so the first matrix is a two by three. I'll erase the screen just a little, that's a two by three. And this is a three by one. Now, very important, notice how these are the same. I like to say the inner dimensions are equal. More specifically, this is what really has to happen. I'll put it as a text box here. The number of columns of the left matrix must equal the number of rows of the right matrix in order for matrix multiplication to occur. Let me move it. Also, okay, also the order matters too. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. But notice how um, the poems. That there's three columns here, right? And there's three rows here. Those have to match up. They must equal each other over for this to happen. Um, I'll explain why that, has, that matters also. But order. I'm just going to have four times five is 20. What's five times 40? 20 doesn't matter, right? But if you reverse 
the order for matrix multiplication, you'll get a different answer or something that you just can't do. So the order really does matter for matrix multiplication. Uh, now let me show you how to actually do this. How do we actually do matrix multiplication? How does it happen? It happens like this. I'll call this, oh, come on. I'll call this row one. I'll call this row two. I'll call the C one. Hey, Kima. Yeah, a whole bunch right there in the middle. I know. Okay, so I'm going to call um, the first two rows R1 and R2, and then call the C1. Um, I'll do it on the screen because some people need to watch this recording. So, what you do is you combine R1 with C1. And you combine R2 to C1. And how does it actually look? What does that exactly mean? You're going to multiply every single no, uh, number here with every single number here. What, what I mean by that exactly is this. You're going to do 1 times 10 plus 2 times 20 plus 3 times 30. And that will be just one number when you add them all up. Then you're going to do R2C1. We're going to do four times 10, take my sweet little time here, plus five times 20, plus six times 30. Okay. Um, notice, notice every single time to do correctly. So you have 20 here, 20 here, 30 here, as you should, because you're using the columns of that left matrix, multiply the rows of the left matrix. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, as you see right here. And then you fork it out. That's all. So we just fork it out and you get the answer. Just like the softball experience, um, example I just gave you guys, right? Like the basketballs and uniforms and the prices, they would all line up correctly. And so final answer, I'll do up here. Uh, i doing this in my head. That's what, 110, I think. Is that right? Yeah. And the other one's 40, 140, 320. Is that correct? Yeah, I think it's 320. Yeah. So that's how you do matrix multiplication. You could, Eric, by the way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's all. It's, I mean, you might see on the ACT, they might ask a question like that. That's what you do. Um, now, very important. What if um, the 30 was not there? What if it was just a, a two by one? You have a problem now because you multiply one with 10. 2 of 20, but does the 3 have anything to link up with? Um, no, if you didn't have that 30 there, you have a problem. They call it dimension mismatch because the inner dimensions don't match up. Hence, it can't be done. Let me show you an example of what it looks like when it can't be done. But yeah, I'm good. So when the inner dimensions don't match, do you, do you just like... Or just say you just can't do it, yeah. I'll give you example 7 we can't do. That's a 2 by 2. That's a three by three. So you would say not possible. Because if I were to look at the first row of the left matrix and look at the first column of the right matrix, there's a mismatch, right? So the six links up with negative 11, negative two matches up with seven. But then what about if I said it's only seven? 
It's going to match up with, right? So that's why you can't, you can't do it. When the inner dimensions don't match up, it can't be done. But the other ones can be, which we're going to do right now. So I'll do um, examples five and six of you guys. So I'll have you try example eight on your own, and then we'll be done for today. And you can do the homework after that. So example five and six can be done. That's a two by two and another two by two. So the inner dimensions, meaning the columns of the left matrix equals the rows of the right matrix. Um, yeah, the rows of the right matrix. So it can be done. And by the way, the final answer will always use the outer dimensions. The final answer will always be using the outer dimensions. Now, what I like to do is a habit. I mean, I once you get good, you don't always have to do it this way, but what I like to do is label. I'll call this R1, R2, C1, and C2. So you're going to start by combining R1 and C1. And then you have R1 and C2 over here. Then you have R2 and C1. This kind of sounds like Star Wars. R2, C2. So let's do it. Uh, we'll do it over here. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, you don't really look at it that way, right? So what you're going to do is this. You're going to combine this row with this column. So when you do that, it's going to look like this. Six times negative nine plus okay that's all r1 c1 that's the r1 c2 r1 c2 that's going to be six times one plus negative two times negative four. So that would be all over here. And you just continue the same pattern, right? Um, then I would do seven negative nine plus eight times zero. Seven one plus eight times ninety four. Now notice negative nine, zero, one, negative four, right? So you have that consistency. Six, six, negative two, negative two, seven, seven, eight, eight. You just work it out. Yes. So you wind up getting a two by two in the end. So yeah, what, what, what happens when I do all this arithmetic? I think I have negative 54 as the first element. Then I get uh, 14 as the next one. Negative 63 is yet another one. And finally, I think I get negative 25. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. OK. Questions? Pretty straightforward. He's got to practice, like with anything in life, that practice where you get good at it, right? All right, two by three and three by one. Remember, always state the rows first, column second. Rows first, column second. These line up. So I could do it. And the final answer will be a two by one. So R1, R2, C1, R1, C1, R2, C1. So 
So you work it out. We have eight times five. Oh, all right. Plus one times negative six. Plus negative two times nine. And also, I'm doing my best to be as methodical as I can be to avoid careless errors, right? Three times five. Columns are lining up nicely. Four times negative six. And of course, seven times nine. And the answer will be a two by one, for sure. Let me clear some space here. And just do the arithmetic. And by the way, if you need a if you need a calculator, do the calculator. Totally fine. That's not not a problem. Um, what's that going to be? Yeah, totally. Yeah, negative forty six, negative sixty four. I think. And then fifteen minus twenty four is negative nine. Plus 63, 54. Yeah. Okay. Pretty easy, not too hard. All right, one more problem, and then you guys get to practice. And we did get uh, 110 today, is that right? Yeah, okay, good. I'm done for the day, so that's good for me. Not good for you, okay, class. <laughs> Three by one. Seven's not possible. We already talked about that. Okay, so this will line up. R1, R2, R3. C1, C2, C3. So it's R1, C1, R1, C2, R1. And by the way, you don't always have to do like If you get the hang of it, you don't have to do this. I'm just um, showing this as a little aid. Then R2, C2, R2, C3 is how I like to teach it. Then R3, C1, R3. C2 and R3, C3. In some ways, uh, it's just kind of hit me. In some ways, it's kind of good to do math in this organized way because when you do, if you actually do want to get into computer program coding, you got to be super organized with your code in order to feel the understand. You know, there a lot of people graduate here have gone on and they make a crap load of money with Google and what they got. Actually, I have some, some students got laid off, by the way, <laughs> several forms, but they'll be fine. They, they'll be fine. <laughs> But you know, um, but you know, in order to be good at programming and coding, you gotta be organized in your thought process, right? This is forces you to think in an organized fashion, right? Be very orderly. So, um, so we're gonna work it out. The answer is a three by three, and we'll check in just one minute. So you gotta do the first row with the first column, first row, the second column, first row, the third column, and then rinse and repeat with rows two and three. <clears throat> Where are you guys get for the first row? It's perfect. I like it. No six, no fourteen, and ten. Lovely. No, because the thing is that um, the first row is just that number, and the first column is just that number. So that's already one element. When you would add it, when you have stuff like this, you feel like negative two and one, and say like four and eight. So that's R1, that's C1. When you combine negative two, four, one, and eight, then you would add them, right? But the final answer has to be three by three because of the outer dimensions. Okay, what's my second row? 12. 
Very nice. And last one. Very good. That's that. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I already did number 12 and 13 for you guys on the homework. So the homework is just, and you guys could probably get it done in the next 15 minutes, I'm pretty sure. But, um, you know, you just, uh, you know, the first page, you're adding all these matrices or subtracting or doing other stuff. Likewise, you're, you're multiplying or distributing on the second page. More of the same on the third page. Um, and then just like kind of uh, solving. So, yeah, that's all. And I'll have the uh, solution key up um, by tomorrow. I'll have it up. Actually, I could try to work on it now, I suppose. Um, but that's that. So we're all done. Or if you need a brain break, I totally get it.